back then when we were working on analog visual effects, you wind up putting a composite together that takes several hours, practically blindfolded. You know, if it's not working, you gotta just do it over again. And I, I liked experimenting. What made it more fun and where I've always had my interests is in starting with nothing and coming up with uh, solutions to, um, to figure out how to solve a problem. I'm originally from New Jersey. A couple of doors down from us were, were this family. They had three kids. Uh, this is back, I don't know whether it's just California or back east or the times, but uh, all the kids used to run around the neighborhood and play together. Their cousin would visit every once in a while from upstate New York, and that, that cousin was Pete Coran. I noticed Pete one time, he had a, like a box brownie still camera, and he was doing split shots with the box brownie, and I said, this is exactly what I've been trying to figure out. We kind of became friends over this weirdness of like trying to take these weird trick pictures and stuff and watching Harryhausen films. I, I would say some of my earliest experiences with um, special effects, first with my grandfather's 8mm camera, because you could actually shoot and then wind it back and shoot on top of a piece of film, effectively having a double exposure, and uh, stop motion animation when I had my Super 8 camera. And then I became interested in, um, you know, Ray Harryhausen and everybody, I think who was ever interested in special effects, had an interest in Ray Harryhausen. The other thing Pete and I had in common when we were growing up was um, this fanzine called FXRH, uh, effects, effects by Ray Harryhausen, that came out of Texas from Sal, Sam Calvin and Ernie Farino, where they basically broke down Harryhausen movies and kind of said, here's how we think he's doing this stuff. He's doing a split shot on the ground here. This ground is a miniature. This is great. And it was like the Bible. We would like pour over these things and go, oh, okay, right? And then you watch the movie and, you know, this is, this is what we did for entertainment back then. It was like trying to figure out how to do this, this kind of stuff. We were a little obsessed. Pete was the leader of being obsessed about this stuff. You know, I mean, we all, we all made, you know, movies when we were kids. We experimented a lot and you, you had to beg your parents for money for the film and it ruined a lot of clothing because we would do things like put, you know, uh, firecrackers under your shirt with little blood packets so you could always tell who was going to get shot up because they were wearing a white shirt. For me it was important because I really wasn't, I don't know, I'm going to speak to generalization, I think the people who do visual effects in general, we're, we all kind of don't fit in with other folks. I mean, like I would go to family gatherings and everybody else is talking about stuff and I'm like, I like is it sports or something? And I'm like, I don't get it. So this is a solitary obsession, obviously. And uh, finding somebody else who basically had the same thing and, and, and to start to actually try to create your own stuff, it was, it, was, it was key. I mean, it was really great. I was interested all the way through high school and when I wanted to uh, get a, you know, go out and uh, get a job somewhere. I, I uh, came out to Cal Arts. I, uh, I told my parents I you know, wanted to go to school there because most of the uh, courses at the time, you know, they had more courses than anybody on more types of equipment than anybody. And, you know, everything that I'd read about in the uh, special effects book, they had all of that equipment. Well, I flew out to see Pete one summer. His mom pay for my flight out if I would drive back with Pete because he wanted to have his car for the summer. So he and I drove across country in his two-seater Vega station wagon. But we had a great time. We had a really a lot of fun. You know, we, we went 200 miles out of the way to the Grand Canyon. We, we made no plans. We just showed up. There was no place to stay. So we slept in the car all night. And then we looked at the Grand Canyon for two minutes and said, let's get out of here. Pete kept trying to get me to go to Cal Arts where he was. Um, I was already going to School of Visual Arts in New York for photography. After uh, a short length of time, uh, you know, Pete was hired at ILM. He's like the youngest guy hired uh, to work on the first Star Wars. I uh, put together a demo reel. So at the end of it, I said, hire me for a week. You don't have to pay me anything. Just let me, uh, you know, j just let me come in and see if I could do the job. Uh, and if, um, if you like me, you could keep me on. You know, if you don't, you don't owe me anything. So that was my way of uh, getting involved, getting my foot in the door, you know, on uh, working on, on Star Wars. And then I went up to ILM as animation supervisor, uh, rotoscope animation supervisor on uh, Empire Strikes Back. 
I was expecting to get laid off right away on on Empire, and 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 in the same at the same time, I was I was still doing jobs down in L.A. Uh, so I could keep a foot down there and uh, be able to um, uh, continue in, in case you know at the end of Empire um, I needed to leave, and in fact that's what I did. I I I wanted to experiment more, and I was always more interested in figuring out how to do things and not just doing things the way everybody else is doing them, you know. So I, I left and uh, formed my own company, VCE. VCE stands for Visual Concept Engineering, and then I changed it to Visual Concept Entertainment. Pete was awarded all the lightsabers for, for Return of the Jedi. Pete kept saying, you know, you should come out and work on this, you should do something here, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I it was already kind of entrenched in what I was doing which was being an assistant to fashion photographers at the time. Uh, then I realized at a certain point that that business was nuts, and I needed to get into a much more sane business, so I decided to get into film business. John Davison I met on um, Piranha. Uh, John came from New Jersey, although I didn't really uh, know him at the time. He's a great guy. He, I, I really enjoyed working uh, with him on uh, the various films, and you know, if he was involved in a movie, I'm sure it was gonna be good. When John talked to me about RoboCop, I was excited. I was interested in, uh, you know, in all of his films. Most of the work that I did on RoboCop was like uh, RoboVision. A lot of my interaction with Paul Verhoeven had to do with the look of RoboVision. So, I mean, I was trying all sorts of things all over the place. I did the opening title, too, for that movie. Most of the stuff that I worked on really just had to do with shooting the artwork for the RoboVision. A lot of the numbering stuff, I think, came from photography that Pete had done off of real monitors, if I'm not mistaken. And there were a lot of elements to it. Like I said, a lot of the, letter, a lot of the lettering and stuff was, uh, some of it was hand-drawn and put in, some of it was photographed. It was a really nice amalgamation of whatever worked, which is the way that everybody had to do things back then. He's on. Pete was very instrumental in trying to all of the stuff where it would glitch and the, the timing on it. I mean, that's that's when you need somebody who knows animation to do stuff. I mean, there's there's a real kind of feeling of um, kinetic thought behind that stuff uh, when when the screen kind of <laughs> kind of comes on. And that's the other key. Everybody needs to be able to make sound effects. If they can't make sound effects, they shouldn't be doing this work. When uh, Robocop confronted Dick Jones, and uh, I took a like a VHS tape of it and screwed it up and 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 made it you know jump and jitter and everything like that and rephotograph off of a funky TV and then cut those frames into the scenes. The first stuff that I really did for Robocop were um, the uh, I don't know what really what they call it at that time. It's like the GPS system as he's tracking. We did have a meeting with Paul Verhoeven and to John Davison at the studio, where I know Paul had kind of dictated like, well, look, here's what I'm looking for. And, he, and Paul was really great. I mean, he's very, very exact. I mean, this is before everybody had this on their phone, you have to remember. I also did the heat sensing scene. At the time, at the time, I didn't know that that technology actually existed because they were actually using it on Predator. Uh, I just put guys in leotards and painted up their leotards to look like what the heat sensing would look like. You know what I liked about working on Robocop was that I'd go to the editing room and, and they'd say, hey, look at the, wh what do you think of this? And, uh, and I'd look at it and I'd go, you're going to get an X rating on this. And they'd say, oh, no, 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 we're not going to get an X rating. We're, 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 it'll be fine, you know, the, the, the sensors will go along with this, you know. And then uh, next week it's like, yeah, we got an X rating. One of the tough things about visual effects and, and post-production in general, um, as opposed to uh, like the work that, that Phil Tippett and Rob Bottin do, uh, did on the, on the film, or any of their films. Um, it's like when I tell somebody that I worked on RoboCop, and they're like, oh, did you meet Peter Weller? No. <laughs> he was gone. Uh, we're so entrenched with after the fact um, so a lot of times, that basically, that stuff doesn't flow to the top. I mean, in other words, seeing Rob Bottin and his crew basically, you know, bolting him into that suit, you know, that's the stuff that always hit the news and always hit everything and whatnot. But, but I, I imagine RoboCop if if those graphics just didn't didn't work. I mean, part of that part of that scene of him waking up and the timing of a lot of that stuff too. I mean, especially in terms of the RoboVision. 
it really it really helped make that character really seem right. like he was like alive to me. It's done in such a nice, believable way, and the, and the, and the work in it is very, very subtle. Pete was always a really a great, a great person to uh, work with the optical printer, where he basically would take uh, take elements and really like art direct the stuff. I work for Dick Jones. Dick Jones. Those graphics are supposed to tell a specific story. You look at the script and say, this has to convey this. He runs OCP. OCP runs the cops. If it wasn't for like the the work that. He kind of designed for that stuff. I mean, something really cheesy could have come out of that. You know, a lot of the stuff back then, we were left to our own devices to come up with the look for anything. I mean, a lot of this stuff evolved and developed by us as opposed to a committee. I mean, I tell people now, I said, you know, there used to be a time in, in, in movie business where I used to do something and then they would put in a movie and that was the pipeline. I, I think that what's missing is is the sense of individualism. Visual effects now are done even more on a uh, uh, an assembly line basis. It's better in the sense that the visual effects are cleaner, they're more homogenous, you know, they're h harder to figure out, you know, where one part of it ends and the other. I mean, they're they're they, they're flawless. You know, but what's missing is you had the ability of putting in something and learning something, you know, about how to uh, how, how to make it work. Over the years, I mean, as as VCE, I, I've worked on practically 300 movies. Yeah, it was it was a lot of work, and and um, and, and, it was, and it was a lot of research, a lot of learning. I really enjoyed learning about. Uh, film and what you can do with film and and how you can how you can work it and you know all of that all of all of that kind of fell apart when everything wound up on the computer. I enjoy working on the computer. I, I just enjoy film a lot more. The cool thing about being involved with RoboCop um, is that it's it's one of those films that still like really massively still holds up. There's a lot of films that you work on that kind of get dated and they're kind of like, you know, well, that's really kind of an 80s thing. But, I mean, I, I remember watching the movie and thinking this is like, this is really like something special because, um, I don't know, it's just such a pure thing. It's comic book in, in a way, but but yet it's so adult in another way and it's 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 violent, but yet it's funny and... And I don't know. It, it, I just really thought that it was going to be—it was going to stick a pin in 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 kind of the history of of, of movies and, and be around a long time because it just—I don't know. It just felt like you saw something special when you when you even when I saw the first screening of it when it was done. It was like, wow, there hasn't really been anything like this.